To me, when I feel the freest is when I'm in the midst of creating a, a work or formulating in, in my mind. And, and to me, that's a great day when I'm able to do that all day long. My name is Rudy Calderon. I was born in Costa Rica and raised here in Los Angeles. The title of this exhibit is Intrinsic Realms. I was born to a family of artists and sculptors in Costa Rica. And my father having worked for his uncle in a sculpture studio from a very young age. So my family and my dad in particular was a huge influence in my life and really one of the first inspirations as, as well as my, my uncles and cousins who were also sculptors and inspired me since I was a, a very young child to pursue a career in, in art, in sculpture in particular. I've been fascinated by art since I was a child. It was always really my favorite thing to do rather than playing with toy cars and toy soldiers. I was one of those kids that was always drawing looking through microscopes, collecting rocks. Stone sculpture in particular has always fascinated me since, since I was quite young. I was always very interested in geology, minerals, crystals, the formation of mountains and volcanoes. The dynamics of the geology of our planet has always fascinated me. So I allowed that fascination for sculpture and stone to really influence the direction that my work took and, and also the medium that I chose as one of my main mediums. Uh, as far as painting, I started off as a painter in art school and uh, there was a time where I was doing both sculpture and painting back and forth, but I, I still had this very, very strong attraction to stone sculpture. And it, it, there came a point where I realized that if I wanted to, to develop my skills as a sculptor in stone and to develop my concept in a significant body of work, I was going to have to uh, really focus primarily on that because of the difficulty of the medium and the amount of time that it takes to develop the skills to work the stone to a level that, that was competent with the ideas and the concepts that I was exploring. And also a body of work, to build a significant body of work in stone is very time consuming. So there, there was a point about, I would say about 17 years ago, where I decided to, to f mainly focus on stone for those reasons, to develop my body of work, to develop my skills, and to develop my concepts within that medium. Now that I feel that I have a significant body of work, my skills are at a level where I now also work monumental, I work public art, uh, my ideas uh, are, are uh, coalescing very, very strongly with the medium. And uh, now I find myself with the urge to paint again. And I have been painting recently, in the last uh, half a year, I've been painting much more than I had for a long time. But what's really important for me is that the paintings and the sculptures come together conceptually so that the paintings and the sculptures are not two different entities. They're both speaking of the same dynamics in nature, the same dynamics uh, of the energy, of that very mysterious energy that science is forever trying to decipher and to understand. So that really moves me and, and that's really what ties my work, my painting, and my sculpture together is that search to understand the dynamics that, that uh, fuel nature itself, consciousness itself. So in some of my paintings, you'll see vortexes. And you'll see that in many of my sculptures as well. Many of my sculptures deal with light. My paintings also deal with light. So I'm basically dealing with the dynamics, that energy behind light, that energy behind consciousness, that energy behind the cosmos in general, microcosm, the, the, mi the microcosm and the microcosm. Uh, so those are the things that fascinate me, that move me. The human condition, our search for harmony with nature, our search for harmony uh, with one another. So those are things that, that have always inspired me since I started doing art as a serious endeavor. And that still continues to inspire me, especially in this day and age where we have so, so many conflicts, where technology is advancing at a very high rate, sometimes much faster than, than human consciousness. So I'm very interested in all those things. I'm interested in how technology is advancing and how, and how consciousness and human um, understanding of life and of ourselves is trying to keep up with technology. Another thing that moves me is working in such a primeval or primitive, you can say, medium, such as stone. 
being one of the first mediums ever used for architecture, for weapons, for art making. It's a material that because of its antiquity, because of its elemental essence, it carries within itself that, that necessary dynamic, that poetry that's inherent in the material. The title of this piece is Presence of Being. It's sculpted out of a calcite on the top, and I use the calcite for its translucent qualities. This is a black and red uh, California marble that's infused with many you know, fossils. And the bottom is also uh, a calcite. And they're put together by uh, stainless steel pins. And basically this piece uh, refers to humanity's constant search for, for that light, for enlightenment, for an understanding of basically our own nature. The translucency of the stone, I use that as a symbol for the, the light that illuminates us, be that uh, the light of the mind, be it the light of spirit, uh, depending on, on each person's particular philosophy of life is how they interpret this. But nonetheless, it really is about light. It's about the ever-growing and expanding capacity of, of human consciousness. So therefore, I use light in my, in my pieces and some of my stones that are translucent to symbolize that ongoing, uh, ever-evolving consci consciousness that, that appears in humanity. This sculpture is titled Danzante. It's a Spanish title, which means dancer. Um, in this particular piece, and, and in the series from which this piece belongs, I'm using a series of torsos, which apparently are breaking away from the bottom of the stone. In this case, this is a, a, the white upper torso is a barium, rock barium, which is a really dense stone, very similar to marble, but a completely different mineral. The bottom is a travertine onyx from New Mexico, which is, uh, I found it as is, uh, and it really reminded me of a flowing skirt. So some of these pieces, I always pair them up with a lower stone that essentially symbolizes the, uh, a garment, in this case, a skirt, but nonetheless a garment as a symbol for the physical body. As you can see with this piece, the, the upper body is breaking away from the bottom part of the garment symbolizing our journey or our search for the higher qualities of the human nature, breaking away from our lower, baser instincts. And that is one of the, the basic meanings of this series of works where the, where the upper torso is breaking away from the lower part of the stone. A good day in my life is a day where my family's all healthy and when I'm working in my art, in my studio all day long, where there's no obstacles to prevent me from creating, to me, when I find myself in the creative process, in the studio, to me, that's how I describe freedom. I mean, to me, when I feel the freest is when I'm in the midst of creating a, a work or formulating in, in my mind. And to me, that's a great day when I'm able to do that all day long.